I'm Liu Yang Liu from Rutgers University, and today I'm going to talk about this paper that I'm collaborating with Microsoft Research called uh, Cutting the Core, Designing a High-Quality Virtual Reality System with Low-Latency Remote Rendering. A uh, VR system has promised to provide unprecedented opportunities uh, like immersive experience in the field of video games, education, healthcare, and in the current market, a uh, virtual reality system can be divided into two categories, a standalone system and tether system. Standalone systems such as Google Daydream or Samsung Gear, they provide you the uh, very like mo they provide you the full mobility, and you can just slide your phone into a car holder, into a into a cardboard, and it turns out to be a VR system. However, due to the capability of the smartphone, it's limited, so the rendering quality is pretty low for the standalone VR system. On the other hand, a tether VR system such as HTC Vive or Oculus Rift, you can connect your uh, headset to a powerful desktop PC to render very high quality, uh, vi visual quality VR frames in a very high frame rate. However, due to this tether design, uh, it's very, the user's mob mobility is very limited. Okay. Um, so, uh, so like such, such design, <laughs> sorry. So you see that uh, such design requires you, your headset to send the sensor motion data to the rendering PC to render the frame, and the frame need to send back to the headset through a very high bandwidth HDMI cable. So uh, this kind of design really works good, uh, and it reduces the motion to photon latency a lot, which is a, t a latent, which is a time from the, uh, the, the motion data sent to the PC and the time until, until the time you actually see the frame on your screen. Uh, so, however, such design is really, really inconvenient to the user, which limits the user's mobility and may also create hazard to the user. So, due to the high desirable of, uh, cutting, uh, of both full mobility and high quality VR system, uh, many people like, uh, think that we should cut the cord of current tether VR design and uh, just replace it with wireless connection. Uh, however, cutting the cord is actually pretty challenging. Uh, first, it's, it's almost impossible to transmit a raw video frame at very high resolution and frame rate using any of the current uh, state-of-the-art uh, uh, wireless protocols such as Wi-Fi or even 6 gigahertz. And uh, in order to transmit through wireless, the necessary step of encoding on the server side and decoding on the client side uh, in, int introduce a really long streaming latency uh, compared to the original rendering latency of the tether design. Uh, so this, uh, this really long streaming latency make it really hard to maintain a stringent VR uh, latency requirement such as the 20 to 25 end-to-end -end latency and also the 11 milliseconds for 90 frames per second. And with that, it's even hard to achieve a very high visual quality due to the quality and latency trade-off. So uh, existing research try to solve some of parts of the test inside this whole pipeline, uh, such as Fury and Flashback. They pre-render the foreground or background frames uh, previously so that you can save some time on this rendering and the encoding pipeline. However, it's very hard for them to adapt to different VR games with multiple moving objects. Another work, MoVR, they design a very robust and seamless 6 gigahertz network. However, they're not considering other processes in the whole VR pipeline, which also introduce a significant latency to the end-to-end to the -end system. Uh, so here, uh, here's the contribution of our system. We designed an tether VR system that is able to achieve both low latency and high quality requirements over a wireless link. So we are optimizing the whole VR remote rendering pipeline. Uh, the two key approach we propose are the parallel rendering and streaming, as well as this uh, remote vSync uh, driven rendering. So I will first introduce this uh, first uh, PRS method. So the high level idea is we parallel this whole uh, sequential process in. In, uh, in, in parallel and in the end reduce the overall end-to-end -end latency. Uh, so uh, now we come back to this remote VR uh, rendering VR pipeline again. 
And we find that uh, the thing is that uh, we see that the rendering actually used the resource on the server side uh, CUDA cores, like the uh, GPU main resources. And the encoding is using the server side hardware encoders. And transmission is using the uh, bandwidth resources on this wireless link. And the decoding is using the client side uh, hardware decoders. So uh, one interesting thing is actually the four, this four main tests uh, runs in four different resources. So if you just run them in sequential, you're actually wasting resources there and uh, just waiting for the previous process. So, uh, so we're wondering whether uh, we can parallelize some of the process and make it uh, like uh, reduce the latency in the end. So uh, then we look, uh, we go to look at the traditional remote VR rendering pipeline. For the re for traditional VR, usually when you start rendering a frame, uh, you start with a wasting signal from the server. And then uh, after that, uh, the system will update the post based on your headset's orientation and position data. And after the post is updated, the system will render left eye image onto a left part of a render texture, and then render the right eye image onto a right part of the render texture. Then the whole frame will be sent to the encoder for encoding. Uh, so, so, so we, uh, instead of doing this sequential process, we actually parallel this process into another way. So after the post is updated, we directly render, uh, we, we also render the left eye image, but it's on a, a smaller size of render texture. Uh, and after that, we directly pass this render texture to encoder for encoding. Well, on the same time, the main render is read, we'll continue to render the right eye image. And after the image is rendered on another texture, it will send to the encoder for encoding. So uh, as we mentioned previously, due to the uh, reason that the encoding and uh, rendering actually happened on different computation resources, so uh, they can actually run in parallel without affecting each other's performance. So with this method, we, actually, uh, we, we can actually make the encoding of the left eye image much earlier than the baseline approach. And we further, uh, we further expand this idea to utilize the multiple hardware encoders and decoders on both the server side and client side. The high level idea is uh, for each eye image, we will cut, in, cut, the, cut each frame into two pieces and feed the, frame, uh, feed the slides into two different hardware encoders. And after each slide is encoded, they will be sent to the client side immediately through the wireless, con uh, wireless network. And the decoded, frames, decoded slides will be combined into a whole frame and displayed on the screen. So uh, here's an illustration of how uh, our parallel re rendering and streaming pipeline can uh, improve the performance. So comparing with the uh, uh, baseline approach that requires this uh, streaming latency, uh, very long streaming latency, we see that our uh, simultaneous rendering and encoding method can already uh, achieve a half latency reduction on the streaming latency due to the reason that we, uh, we, we start the encoding, transmission, decoding of the left eye much earlier. And with the four-way parallel streaming, we, we can further achieve a, a three-quarter latency reduction. Uh, so uh, actually, when we re implement this, uh, this method, we face another problem that actually uh, there are a lot of uh, popular uh, uh, popular GPUs uh, such as NVIDIA GeForce uh, series GPU, they only support two uh, hardware encoders and actually our system, uh, the best performance requires four hardware encoders. So we also propose another method called this encoding multiple multiplexing. So the basic idea is we can reuse a single hardware encoder for multiple encoding tasks so that we can only use two hardware encoder to achieve four-way parallel streaming. Uh, so uh, there's many details we read in the papers, such as using some long-term reference frame that in, the, in this uh, video streaming uh, techniques. So I won't introduce much detail, detail here. So you can refer to our paper. Uh, so uh, here's a second contribution of our work, uh, which is the remote wasting driven rendering. So uh, in this part, uh, we realized that besides the, uh, besides the uh, forming task, rendering, encoding, transmission, decoding, there's another significant component that may increase uh, a lot of uh, latency to the end to end uh, to, to our end to end system which is which which which, which we call it uh, wasting latency and uh, in this method we managed to reduce this latency to a really short period so before we go to the detail uh, i guess uh, all of you need to uh, uh, i need to introduce this uh, background of wasting signal so uh, the wasting uh, so before we have wasting signal uh, so here is uh, just a, a pipeline when the gpu try to render something on a buffer 
and the screen is displaying this buffer. So if we don't have, uh, so if we don't have missing signal, the GPU has its own rendering frequency, while the screen has its own display frequency. So you might see this problem, this tearing problem happen on your screen. So which happens when the GPU is in the middle of rendering a new frame, but the screen is fetching the frame to display at this time. So, uh, so we find that there's no like synchronization between the GPU and the and the screen. So this is why the modern computer architecture uses Wi-Sync signal to control the uh, to synchronize the rendering uh, rendering frequency and the display frequency. So the basic idea is the GPU will, GPU will render the frame onto a back, back buffer, and after it finished rendering, it will wait there until the Wi-Sync is triggered. So the, when the system re receives this Wi-Sync signal, the back buffer will be copied to the front buffer to display on the screen, while the GPU will continue rendering the next frame. Next frame. So this, uh, this method actually doesn't uh, introduce a lot of latency to the uh, tether design system, such as the monitor we have. We don't have much problem. But for this kind of uh, remote VR rendering, we find that there, there's an uh, unsynchronized Wi-Sync problem that may occur due to the reason that the server and the client device actually runs different Wi-Sync signal. Uh, so if you don't synchronize them, there's uh, some big problem. Uh, so this slide, I will give some examples of how, how this may affect the performance. So ideally, we, we would like to see this case uh, when the T-render is the time that the frame is actually rendered on the, on the server. Start rendering on the server, it's originally triggered by the server-side Wi-Sync signal. And the T-ready, it's the time that the frame is already goes through the rendering, encoding, transmission, and decoding task, and already sits in the back buffer and uh, wait for wait for it to be to be displayed. So it's very good uh, uh, ideal case because we see that the next missing signal is just after a little bit, uh, just after a little bit after the after this uh, T ready time, so that this frame won't wait in the back buffer for a long time until it, it can be displayed on the screen. Well, on on the other hand, we see another case that this. A T ready just passed the previous whistling signal a little bit, and it need to wait for this almost a whole uh, frame time until it can be actually displayed on the screen. Uh, and this case is even worse that since the frame end, we see that the frame end just passed the previous whistling, and the next frame mm, mm, is very lucky and it's before the next whistling. So this means that these two frames uh, comes in this back buffer in the same whistling period, which means that the first frame will be discarded. So if we want a 90 frame per second experience, if this continues to happen, it's, uh, we, we, the experience will decrease sharply. So uh, our solution is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, for this kind of remote with, uh, VR rendering, instead of, on, on the server side, instead of using the server Wi-Sync signal to trigger the rendering on the server, uh, we, use a, we use a remote Wi-Sync driven update to trigger it. The, the idea is we have the controller which is triggered by the client side wasting signal and we want the frame to be in the back buffer just in time and it won't wait, it won't wait for the wasting signal for a long time. Uh, so we, we designed this controller function, we, con, con, we, we consider the different scenarios like the variance on the encoding and variance in the uh, rendering part and we ends up with a, a lot of uh, a pretty good improvement on this uh, wasting latency. Uh, so uh, here I, I'll go to the hardware setup of our system. Uh, on the server side, we use a NVIDIA, uh, we use a desktop PC with the NVIDIA Titan X GPU, which connected to this uh, Netgear Wagic AP. So the server is connected to the client through a six gigahertz wireless network. On the client side, uh, we're using uh, the hardware decoders on the uh, Intel laptop uh, to decode the frame and display on this HTC Vive headset. Uh, here's the evaluation of our system. Uh, we evaluate our system on four different VR games. We carefully choose them to cover different aspects, like different uh, moving objects in the scene, and also the different rendering, uh, rendering load of, the, uh, of game. And we also compare our work with two previous mo mobile VR systems, which, which have uh, Flashback and Fury. And we show that actually our work uh, outperformed uh, this two approach in, four, in all four aspects, the latency, a frame rate, a visual quality, and the resolution can be achieved. Uh, so uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, I'm gonna show the, how is the end-to-end -end, end -end latency improvement of our system. Uh, so uh, I show this four figures, uh, which is showing the CDF of the latency for different scenarios for uh, four different VR games. 
And if, we, if you compare the red curve, which is our system performance, with the black curve, which is a baseline approach, we find that we achieve around 50 milliseconds latency reduction, and we achieve a very low variance compared to the baseline approach, and also a very low uh, streaming latency. And if you further look at this uh, figure D, which is a, a roller coaster game, uh, in this game, because the uh, rendering task is pretty, uh, pretty light, so uh, we see that actually our system can achieve equivalent performance compared to this uh, tether VR design. Uh, in this slide, I'm, uh, I show that the, the, streaming, the trade off between the streaming latency and the visual quality we introduced previously in the challenge part. So we see that the, for the baseline, if you increase the uh, image quality, the, 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 uh, the streaming latency will increase sharply, but, but we show that for our system, we can achieve visual loss list quality, which is uh, larger than 0 0.98 SSM score uh, with, with almost uh, very, li very little streaming latency. And furthermore, we also show that uh, our system can support 4K resolutions. Uh, and here's the conclusion of our system. So in this paper, we designed this uh, Antether VR system that is able to achieve a, a very low latency and high quality requirement. So the, uh, we, we can actually achieve 4K resolution within 20 milliseconds. And a uh, 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 limitation I need to point out is because, uh, we haven't addressed the link outage problem uh, for the 60 gigahertz network. So during the experiment setup, we are like uh, fixing the antennas there. So uh, we, we would like to embrace any uh, orthogonal solutions as, uh, such as small VR to make it a better system. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm glad to take any questions.